Hello and welcome to the Friday, October 6, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Recently, DDA published a brief diary showing how to decode some little Indian IP addresses that are stored in Windows event logs. Well, it turns out it's not just Windows doing it this way. Also, good old uh, Unix or Linux is doing it in the slash proc uh, file system. Jim now wrote a quick Python script that will allow you to decode these entries uh, both in IPv6 as well as IPv4. Of course, quite a bit simpler in IPv6 because IP addresses are hex anyway, so the translation is really just sort of shoveling uh, bytes around. For IPv4, of course, it will do not just uh, the flipping of the bytes, uh, but will also uh, decode from hexadecimal to the dotted decimal system. And Cisco fixed a critical vulnerability in its emergency responder product. This is typically used to run 911 call centers and the like. And yes, it suffers from what Cisco calls static credentials used for a development but others may refer to this as a backdoor. If it hasn't happened already, it's probably just a matter of time for the root credentials in this case to be posted publicly somewhere. Haven't seen it myself yet, but haven't really been looking, so please patch. And as expected, we do have a proof of concept exploits and now for CVE 2023-4911. That's the privilege escalation vulnerabilities that was made public earlier this week or also referred to as Looney Tunables. I'll link to one of the exploits that I think is legit. Haven't really tested it myself yet. But keep in mind that yes, there are multiple valid exploits that have been released not all of the exploits being, however, released and advertised may actually be uh, functioning exploits or some of them may have additional payloads. Be careful as usual when you are playing with some of these exploits to test if your systems are vulnerable or not. And sadly, malicious uh, Python packages are nothing really all that terribly new anymore, but Checkmarks has a new report where uh, they're sort of looking at uh, some of the more recent uh, malicious Python packages that they found in context, looking back at you know how they invo- evolved. Uh, Pretty interesting analysis of the latest ones. A couple hundred packages they found uh, with this malicious code. It's essentially an info stealer, stealing anything from Wi-Fi passwords to creating uh, screenshots. Also going very much after crypto coins. And that, of course, uh, provides some insight as to how successful these uh, packages are. Yes, they were downloaded uh, tens of thousands of times, but were they actually run and were they actually successful? Well, according to a blockchain records, the attacker here got away with a few hundred thousand dollars apparently in earnings. So these are certainly successful and the obfuscation techniques and such being used to hide the malicious code are becoming more sophisticated according to Checkmark. So it's not really all that easy to spot these malicious packages, in particular if they still appear to provide some valid functionality. Just as a reminder, also in that context, uh, I will be speaking in about a week, uh, Saturday in a week, here in Jacksonville at B-Sides about some of the threats in particular focused on developers. And yes, uh, these type of malicious packages will certainly be on the agenda. And Binary published a blog post uh, discussing a number of new vulnerabilities they found in Supermicro Baseboard Management Controls or BMCs. There are a total of uh, seven vulnerabilities. Uh, One of them is a command injection vulnerability, but it requires authentication. In case you don't have a password to go and actually exploit this vulnerability, that's where the remaining six vulnerabilities come in. They are cross-site scripting vulnerabilities that could essentially then be used to take over a logged-in account and exploit the command injection vulnerability. 
Well, and this is it again for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for liking this podcast. Thanks for providing feedback. And of course, as always, thanks for giving this podcast high ratings in your favorite podcast platform. That's it. And talk to you again on Monday. Bye.